Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Manor Lords. So we're diving into the second Let's Play on the hardest difficulty. We're gonna get into some things. War is coming. Uh, when you play on normal, you get 20 spears and 20 shields, but when you play on the hardest difficulty, you get the best of thing of all. Nothing. So what we're gonna do is establish a trade route for bows, because bows are gonna be a lot cheaper, and it's gonna be really easy for us to kite. Otherwise, we'd have to buy enough shields and spears to make units, whereas the bows, we can just make a unit as long as we have the bow. We're going to import 20 of these bad boys. We're also going to be increasing our trade. Now, one of the easiest items for me to trade right now is probably these vegetables. We're going to dial that down to 40. All right. And when I get enough money, I'll try to open trade for leather since we have so much of that. But right now, we're just going to have to do boards and stuff. Another thing that we're going to do is increase the hunting limit to 20. We accidentally over hunted a little bit. I'm going to pull one guy back since we can't do that anyway. And because I lost the stall, I'm going to replace it with a granary. This granary is going to go to all of my food producing things and move foods. It'll also help stock the food markets. Very useful to have. Uh, the forager hut, as you can see, is doing pretty dang well now we've got uh, bow production coming in we're gonna have to conserve our money to buy a lot of bows we need to go over key tips do not upgrade to tier two if you're playing on hard on normal you can actually kind of get away with it because the negatives for approval aren't so severe normally i would just make bows but if i do that what happens is it tanks the whole village i had a 40 minute let's play like on my seventh run where i decided like well, what would happen if i just upgraded one house like does it do it fractionally it's like Oh, it's only, you know, you get a fraction of the negative for that one house? No. You get the full negative. None of your positives matter anymore. Your church goes the negative because it's not tier two. Your food um, food variety goes the negative because you don't have three different things, which is why I'm growing the apples to get that third food group. It Your whole town crashes. Um, I thought it was pretty smart. I clicked one button and destroyed the whole village. But that's on the hardest difficulty. That's where when things are a little bit more severe. So if you're on normal... Mm, I mean, you can do it, but it's really advised that you don't. And it would be great if I could, because I could make bows and get passive money. But I can't. Another thing we're going to do, because we are building a lot of buildings with stone, is we're going to increase that to two workers, and we're going to ramp this up. So, we need to get the church to tier 2. In order to get the church to tier 2, we need stone, and we need clay tiles. So what we're going to do is come over here, get ourselves a mining pit. Now, you cannot place a mining pit around a, a deposit, okay, for the mining... See the, the big orange circle? The, ye <laughs> the yellow circle? Has to go over it. So if you place it to the side, you will get nothing. You have to place it over it. And I'm saying this not to condescend you, but to let you know, because I didn't <laughs> do that. <laughs> I did not do that on my first try. Uh, and I felt really dumb. So if you don't want to feel dumb, put it over the, the damn thing. There we go. Coolio. All right, we got two free families. We are we are chugging along. Now, the, the bandit right here is going to be coming in 365 days. And this is like an automatic trigger. You just kind of know it's coming when you hit a certain point in the game. It's always coming. And it's just going to be a small gang of like, you know, 18 dudes with like some clubs and stuff. But eventually it's going to be greater. So we are going to have to focus on our military. The easiest thing to do would be to get our retinue. Um, the easiest, easiest thing to do would be to get a manor. And you can build a manor. Uh, we need a small village first, though. We need to get to tier 2 so we can do that. But you can build just the manor itself and uh, be pretty good. Alright. Also, have to get malt. Yeah. Nice. New family. Alrighty. All right, we got 11, which means that we probably bought some money, right? Or not money. We bought money. Um, we've got five bows. Cool. We need 20. My, yeah, 94% approval. Cool. Got the mine. Next thing we need to do is build the clay tiles. Get the furnace up. Neric. Neric storage full. Now, a cool thing about logging camps, if you build multiple logging camps, uh, they'll store the wood in them. And that was something I didn't actually think about. That was uh, I saw that on Strat Gaming's guide. Really smart. Really smart guide. You should definitely check it out. It's a uh, mistakes not to make guide. But that was a good point that he put, he, uh, put out there is that logging camps uh, can be storage for wood. 
if you build two logging camps, then uh, you can get some easy storage there. We're going to pull back on that. Since we got, yeah, we already got two people there. Very good. What's our stone at? 23? Woo. All right, we're upgrading the granary. All right, animals are starting to come back. Everything's starting to come back, but the freaking woodcutter lodge. We need to get the two, two people, I think. All right, clay furnace, ready to go. Neat. All right. Roof tiles. Fire. Fire. All right. Lots of leather. Neat. All right. We're getting some good trade. We don't have a horse. Let's get a horse. Five bows. I think I'm actually going to up this 24, so we're going to have two 12s. We just got to pray we get enough weapons in time. All right. Ranking it up. All right. So let me explain kind of what I'm doing. I'm getting the apples because you need three food sources at level two. I'm getting the the church to level two because you need a tier two church for level two houses. I'm going to try to get some ale because you need ale for the tavern to work and to get the entertainment bonus. If I can get all those things. I can not have my approval rating tank to the bottom of the ocean and we will not die. All right, stone is becoming cool. Um, I mean, we could even sell stone if we wanted to. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the guides out there and exploits are actually like a, a lot of horseshit. Uh, they're going to completely patch trade. Uh, so if you flood a market with a certain good, what you get will decrease. So planks right now, because I'm flooding the market with planks, probably more like one silver. So keep in mind... You will not be able to flood the market with a certain type of good and make a fortune like you could before. Yeah, we should probably get another. And um, ox are really good. Think of... That's pack station. So if ox basically... Two things. If, if you're ever moving wood, wood logs, and if you're plowing, th that's it. So if you want to, if you have one ox, it's got to be split between logging camps and the sawing. So they'll, they'll pull the logs, you know, to the, where, where the hell are you? The saw pit. So you need them to move logs, the saw pits, you need them to move logs from the woods. You need them to move logs to, to housing and construction. They so need, you know, t two or three at this level. You have to have at least two or your production is going to suffer. I'm going to go for three. And then when you get farms, you're going to want one per plow. There we go. And I upgrade that to the small stable. All right, we got 12 rooftop tiles. We can upgrade our church. Beautiful day. Uh, we're going to need rooftop tiles to upgrade houses to tier 3. Oh, we're not there yet. I'm going to pause this production. We do have that option. I'm going to pause this production. Beautiful day. Look at trade. Eight. All right. We're going to go all the way to 32 bows. We get 16 and 16. I'm going, I'm going all the way. All right. Stone, I don't think we need any more stone. Cool, we got 10 bows. Too much leather. Nice, got the large granary, and it is moving lots of goods for us. We need to make sure that this market has enough free booths, three free booths. All right, the barley. Ooh, we have the worst, the worst barley plots in the world. Now, um, Strat Gaming came out with a guide, and it is brilliant. 
And I actually have to give him a massive amount of credit. So, the mistake people make with farming, myself included, and I had no idea until I watched Strat Gaming's guide, which I will link in this video since I referenced it twice. Um, if you do a big plot like this, right, if the ox comes on to plow, it kicks all the farmers off. So if he can't, can't finish plowing, you'll go like halfway through seed planting season, and it causes is issues. So what he suggested, which is brilliant, is that you make really small farm plots, like this. So we're going to do barley production, okay? Because we need it for the tavern. We're going to do it right here. So instead of, instead of making one big farm, you make one big area of small farms. And what this does is increases the chance that you're going to get all your harvest. That way... When the cow is plowing, after he's done plowing, they come and plant seeds. Otherwise, you have to wait for the cow to plow, sorry, the ox to plow the entire freaking field before he gets there. That was the problem I was having. I had no idea it was doing this. So the uh, the problem, only problem with this is you have to, you know, set everything for crop rotation. But the, the great thing to, about this is you could eat it's actually a pretty good strategy because now i can say okay those two grow barley those grow barley and then the 30 or these guys grow barley and i probably won't need as many many people really brilliant strategy very brilliant point completely giving all credit to strat gaming this is not my idea very very cool incredibly brilliant like honestly i i i just started playing a few days. i haven't had as much time as other people but um, I don't know if I would have discovered that for quite some time. There's a really, really good strategy. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to put the farmhouse. Because I can actually put the farmhouse right here. And then the industry. Will be a malt house. go there's a lot to do but uh booze production will have to get in a tier two home so that will be a little interesting because we're gonna have to have everything else it's a little off that way right but you can see that where our approval is through the roof we have 18 homes we're going to need more homes we're gonna need a lot more homes what's our food production at 14 yeah our food is fantastic um we want to keep so the markets as Strat Gaming said, and I've noticed is they'll hit everywhere in the map in the whole region, just this region, but they'll go to the nearest houses first. So you still want to structure things this way so that you can it's easier to upgrade stuff. But yeah, it's important to note that the distance isn't as important as you think. Long they'll kind of automatically stock from it. You just need to make sure that the markets themselves are stocked appropriately. Okay, we're just gonna do four homes over here. another ox all right eventually we'll be able to get the heavy plow now will allow us to use oxen to, to increase plow speeds right now we're just going to do it by hand we're actually going to put two families out there and we should see some pretty what's crazy is these two farms will probably get more of a yield than my other farms because we're actually properly planting as he mentions they don't if they're too big, they just don't get enough time to plant everything. These are huge fields. And I was I was planting massive fields before. So the the small field strategy is brilliant. It's it's literally brilliant. And these are gonna be artisan uh artisan homes over here. Two hundred and fifty one. All right, we got 11 out of 32. Yeah, but you can see there's a lot of... Um, these guys are... Oh, what did I do? <laughs> barley, barley, barley in the second. 
the crop rotation button went off. It should be fallow. Be barley. Be barley in the third. All right, we're back on track. There you go. That's how you do farming. Brilliant. Strat Gaming's guide. Check it out in the description after the video. Um, phenomenal. Dude's dude's brilliant. I was going to make a guide and I saw his guide and I'm just like, nope, no point. You can't. <laughs> Dude covered like half the things that I was going to cover and taught me a bunch of stuff. So no point in reinvent, no point doing something that's already been done better. But what I do differently is that I show how those th things happen. It's one thing to explain a mechanic. What I do is I show the mechanics. So, that's kind of what I'm rolling with right now. We got that church up. It's neat. Uh, we need The next thing we need to do is get those apple orchards going. But yeah, so we're getting ale production so that when we upgrade to tier 2, uh, which we're going to do over here probably, we're going to immediately start producing ale, probably immediately start producing bows as well. I'd like to sell bows. It's one of my best trade items. It's actually very possible. But yeah, like I said, um, you need quite a bit of people on these farmhouses. Even though like these fields don't look that big, they are massive. When you look at them, they are massive. We got this beautiful music in the background. Just kind of checking stuff out. Yeah, we'll make malt. Gonna make and sell dyes too. It's not bad. But there we go. So now you can see how much work goes into. This is why getting the ox upgrades is pretty important. Once we get two upgraded houses, we'll get ox plows. Um, but like I said, the ox will kick you off the farm. No one can do anything. They can't plant or anything. So that's why this method works. It's not perfect, though. Uh, they will probably change some of this stuff because it's kind of screwy. But yeah, don't underestimate how many people you need on a farm plot. I'm putting three out there. We got six families doing nothing. Okay. Logging camp. Where's my forester? Let's put two people on the forester. Tannery's doing all right. I think probably we could up the tannery. We're doing great. Winter's coming. We got enough food for a year. But you can see, look, they're still... So, they haven't even planted yet. <laughs> and that's the problem with large fields. All right. Twenty-two, man, we're we're rolling. All right. Another thing about this area is we can always do more chickens or something, but we're gonna need to expand pretty substantially. We might need. They should have well water access, actually, even from over here. But I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. I'm gonna put another well. Yeah, the, as long as there's like a building, the whole region gets it. It's kind of weird. I basically made a cross city. Nice. Yeah, having multiple ox, oxen, as you can see, is incredibly vital. Remember, short plots, um, only the, the vegetable farms benefit from having large plots. You just need enough to get the ability to build the extension. But yeah, you can see they're getting supplied. Yeah, food variety is good. But like Strat said, it hits the closest houses first, so it's easier to upgrade the closest houses for that reason. Yeah, we need to up some stuff. 
hundred percent. That is amazing. All right, cool. We got twenty-seven now. Look at that. So they had. So now they're planting, as you can see. You can see how much, how much work it takes. You, you're thinking in your head, oh, you know, I got a farm with a bunch of people on it. They should be able to handle it. It's like not really, man. Like you actually need quite a bit of farmers. But that's why I was getting such bad yields on my last let's play video. All right. Well, Brian. Uh, it's because I was thinking too big. I actually would have gotten better yields had I gone smaller, like substantially better yields. So, yeah, very, very cool. All right, we need more market stalls. <laughs> Funny is, like I said, eventually I'm actually going to destroy this whole city and build the epic city down there. I'm going to rearrange everything. This might stay. This might definitely stay. The farming will definitely stay. Another cool thing I learned is you can claim territory just by sending your armies and destroying all the bandit camps. I didn't know that. Um, until someone pointed that out to me in the last video. A little FYI. All right. Could buy a horse. I should buy a horse. Let's buy a horse. There we go. Nice. Yeah, we're making money. Okay, we're going to start the apples now. I need to I need to get the uh the new food sources. We got apple orchards going. We got all these small fries. But, yeah, this isn't uh, meant to be pretty. This is meant to teach mechanics, so... Trust me. If I were playing a little bit differently, I'd be more focused on that. But right now, I'm hardest difficulty just trying to survive, really. Alright, saw pit. Woodcutter's Lodge. What are we doing here? Yeah, we're good. We're 12 and 12. Lots of planks. Good. Nice. We're doing really well. There's a lot you can do to micromanage too. Like I could take the forager hood off. I could take the forester off. Um, but I, I just kind of let them do their things because I always forget. Yeah, we need definitely need to up the forester. Logging camp I just turned off. Um. Oh wait, wait, wait. Sorry. That was the the strategy of using this to store lumber. You can see we have a lot of lumber there. We got two people there. That's good. And we're getting two families per month because we're over 75%. It's pretty crazy. We're just... I mean, we're rocketing. That's what I'm saying. You can really screw up by upgrading and not being ready for it. But it's going to take three years to get the full... Until these uh, apples completely bloom. Oh. And you can destroy... By hitting this button, you can destroy what you had there and put something else. So if you wanted to do like farms here, just you know, just to do it and then get rid of them and put artists in, you could totally do that. Nice fifty gold, gold, silver shekels. Nice wave twenty-eight out of thirty-two. Very good. We'll be ready. We will be ready for the bandits. Got our chickens, we got our orchards, farms. Yeah, we could also easily cut back on the farms, but we got like nine free families right now. Oh boy. All right, let's get another ox. There we go. 32 warbos. It's all money now. Probably what I should do is get leather to sell next. I think we're getting really close. That's the cool thing. The granary's a bit far away. I don't actually remember where 
malt and all that stored. We're not there yet. Pantry. Oh yeah, the pantry here is pretty big. Pretty big storage. We're actually running low on hides. Um, I think what I'm going to do is over here, because this is probably like the last guy. Get a couple goat sheds. Like I said, size doesn't matter on these, so these are perfect. Get some more hides coming in. Then I can make leather and sell it. Alright, because I got two people in the leather maker. I'm just going to leave it because I'm increasing that production. But yeah, we got our apple orchards going. Got everybody going. Yeah, you can see the church even hits all the way over here. In the water. But the fu um, fuel is a little bit harder. Oh shit, they sent a little bit more than I ex anticipated. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't expect 36. That's right, 36. I forgot the AI is more aggressive. Ooh, okay. Well, let's see how good I am at this game, right? See what I made out of. Not made out of enough. We'll find out. I'm trying to look at the big picture here. I'm like, uh, we got big old mean guys coming. Maybe I can buy a few more bows before they get here. That's another reason why we want to get the manor up as soon as possible. But I need to get the small village. I need to upgrade the tier two to do that. That's the problem is if I upgrade a house, like my whole approval will just tank and people will start leaving. Like it can completely destroy the village if you're not prepared for it. We're actually pretty close to being prepared for it. Um, We got 53 men available and 32 bows. That's pretty sweet. I'm glad I increased the bows. We're just going to watch. Here they are. Making their way downtown. All right, they're getting close. All right. Let's do this. So you just click twice and it'll automatically split them if you're wondering how to split units. Um, since there are two of them, I can do them into three equal units. That way I can have one dude, two dudes running while one's shooting. We'll do that. Yeah, we're we're slightly outnumbered, and now we have our bowmen. But uh, it is AI, and it's not entirely too good. But that doesn't always matter if the AI has you know more firepower. But all right, there are three ways you can do this: you bunch all your dudes together, try to take out as many as you can. You're not going to take out much. They have really good um, front shield protection. What I'm going to do is spread them out. And I'm going to see which two units they try to attack. And based on that, I'll shoot them from behind with one unit. So if they go after this unit and this unit, this guy will be shooting one of the units. And we're basically just going to like three stooge, like three stooge it around. We're just going to Scooby do it. Uh, whatever uh, works for you. But we're going to be able to kill all these guys. And this is an easy tactic that you can use. I like the Zoidberg strategy too. But we don't have ink pouches. But we're just going to have to shoot him in the face with bows. It's going to have to do. Alright. This is a weird little spot that I've chosen to fight this battle. You can see they're kind of gravitating over here. Based on that angle. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to spread out. Alright, here they come. Looks like they're going all for that one dude. So I'm going to angle these guys. 
And it's possible two units chase one, which would be beautiful because then I can get uh, some really good shots off here. Here we go. And once they come into the trap, we'll hit them from the side. All right, let's do this. All right, now I want to point out something important. You see this little circle? That's their like field of view. So if you you go to shoot at will, it decreases accuracy at half the maximum range or more. So if he shoots or like past this, it will reduce accuracy. So if you're shooting from far away, you want to not do that. But if you're shooting from close, you definitely want to increase your accuracy. This is what we're going to do. We're going to three stooge it. And we're going to let our dudes over here, holy cow, do their thing. <laughs> AI is not too smart, is it? Okay, AI is getting a little bit smarter now. Basically, you just run in different directions. Sometimes your men are smart enough to know what you're trying to do. Sometimes they're not. Right? And so when you see them change their position like that, you want to change yours. For these guys. Oh yeah, you get the you get the picture. Lost well, maybe one guy so far. This is a good spot. Yeah, we routed him. It's it's GG now. Let's end this. Let's end this dance. Now we can just hold. There we go. And we did it. And that's how it's done. We lost one dude. Wait, wait. We lost one dude, didn't we? Oh man, there's so many bodies. We're actually gonna have to build a burn pit now. If they die on your your terrain, it's quite sometimes better to go to another. Huh. Usually, I actually meet him on another place. Um, because we're gonna have to. Yeah, we're gonna build a giant old burn pit now. Corpse pit. So, where do we want to put the corpse pit? Put it out over here. Alright. Alright. 
Well, that's going to do it for this Let's Play. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will come back with more. But that's how you survive the early stages. Now we definitely have to get, um, you know, more stuff. So we're going to need to get shield production and sidearm production. Most likely going to do that for from artisans. We're, we're really, really, really close now that we have uh, barley planted. And you can see we have a really good yield of 19 right now. It's going to continue to go up. So use that small farm strategy as Strat Game. Strat Gaming has like brilliantly pointed out. Very, 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 very awesome. And everybody have a good day.